One of the strange things about quantum physics is that we can describe matter, which to our senses often feels hard and unyielding, by waves. Most people get their intuition about waves from music. When a bassist plucks his strings, it's hard to place the pitch precisely, because waves have a particularly interesting property. You can't tell both the time a note was played and its pitch with an accuracy greater than about a quarter cycle. The low range of a bass is only tens of vibrations per second, so you can only hear a couple of complete cycles during a pluck. On the other hand, if the bassist uses his bow and plays the note long enough to get a good idea of the pitch, there's no unique instant during which the note was being played. Compare this to a violin's high range. Its strings vibrate hundreds of times per second, so it's far easier to pick out a note, and far easier to cringe when it's not played precisely on pitch. In quantum physics, we deal with matter waves, and the heavier the object, the higher the frequency. Our intuition about being able to measure the position and momentum of a particle at the same time is because we've spent our life listening to tightly strung violins and piccolos. When we get down to the size of molecules, which are more similar to the bass, we have to start considering their wave nature to describe them properly. This inability to measure both the pitch and time of a note, or the position and momentum of a particle, is called Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. Until Heisenberg, people had believed that it was possible, in principle, to predict the end of the world, simply measure the position and momentum of every particle in the universe, and compute it. But Heisenberg showed that it was fundamentally impossible. In music, the click of a metronome occurs at a very precise time, but you can't assign a pitch to it. Similarly, if we try to measure the position of a particle very carefully, we'll know very little about its momentum. Just as with the time and pitch of a note, there's a fundamental limit on the accuracy to which we can know both a particle's position and momentum. Another analogy between music and quantum physics also holds. Just as you can play notes simultaneously, or superpose them, to form a chord, you can superpose possibilities. When a photon hits a partially reflective surface, like a tabletop, the universe becomes a chord of two possibilities. One note has the photon being reflected, while another note has the photon being absorbed. The true outcome is a chord with both notes. Both possibilities are being played simultaneously. A tuning fork gives a very pure tone whereas a piano has many overtones. Overtones give richness and timbre to an instrument. A tuning fork is a very simple structure. All of the energy from striking it is in a single vibrational mode. In a piano, the energy from the hammer travels down the strings and vibrates the pegs and the sounding board and the whole complicated structure, each part of which vibrates, which in turn vibrates other strings. This transfer of energy between different modes of vibration, between different notes, is called coupling. In the chord of the universe, coupling can also occur. We call it entanglement, or if a person's involved, measurement. In the example of the photon above, there's one world note in which the photon is reflected. If it bounces into your eye and hits your retina, 
it triggers an electrical signal that goes to your brain. In one of the world notes, you saw the photon, and in the other, you didn't. The timber of the universe is the spectrum of possibilities that lie open before you.